All right, guys, we're going to start solving trig equations. One of my favorite things about trig. And so we have this equation, 2 cosine theta plus root 3 equals 0, and we need to solve for theta. Just Let's just pause and take a moment to think about what you guys have learned and accomplished so far. I'm going to give you this equation, and you're going to solve for theta. First off, if I were to give this to you guys in algebra one, you would have been like, I don't even, I don't even know how to read that, <laughs> right? This is pretty cool that you guys are going to be able to figure out what values of theta, what degrees is going to make this function zero. I don't know. Like to me, I feel like you can do this. Like you're like mathematician. Like I just, when I first started getting these, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like I feel, I feel smart. S-M-R-T smart. Um, okay, so let's figure this out. Let me show you an easy way to do this. Don't make this more complicated than it has to be. If I were to have given you something like this, that is really hard to read. Let me get a different color, sorry. If I were to give you something two, and then let's call that a variable, two x plus square root of three equals zero, could you have solved that? Yes, it's a little gross, but yeah, we could have. This is a root three, it's just like a constant. If that still scares you, then we could even go even further and make it look like this, and now we're like pre-algebra mode, right? Minus three, minus three, divide by two, okay? Make these guys look like something that's not scary, okay? We're doing the exact same step, steps here, but for this, and instead of solving for x, we're gonna solve for cosine of theta, okay? So we have two cos theta or x, whatever you want, plus root three equals zero. So same thing like I did here, I'm gonna subtract that three, or in this case, it's root three. Make it look not scary to figure out how to do the more scary looking part, okay? All right, well, there I go, 2x, 2, that's an x, equals negative root 3, root 3. Now we're gonna divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I get cos theta equals negative root 3 over 2. I gotta figure out, without a calculator, mind you, what theta values could be. Okay, so now we're gonna kinda put a little bit of everything together. We are going to, so cosine is a h, right? Also, we need to remember all students take calc. We're talking about a negative cosine. Well, let's figure out where cos is positive. Cos is positive in all, so quadrant one, and cos is positive in quadrant four. So I want negative. It can't be here, it can't be here. So this value has to be in these two angles, or these two quadrants, okay? So I need to figure out what this angle is and what this angle is. It's gotta be a bow tie, same thing, ooh, sorry. Uh, same thing with the bow tie, like it always has to be a bow tie in trig, it's gotta be one of those triangles. Now, we have an A of root three. Let me write this guy a little bit bigger so we can see. So we know it's in quadrant two or quadrant three. And then we said a is square root of three. And h is two, okay? This is a negative, which makes sense because that's negative x's. What reference triangle is this? What reference triangle has a two and a root three? That would be your one, two, root three triangle, which is your 30, 60, 90. And remember, theta is always going to be opposite of the smallest, or let's see, so this is going to be a 1, and that's going to be a negative 1, right? So we're going to go with theta uh, 1 and 30 are always going to be the same, right? Smallest side, smallest angle, small side, smallest angle. So that's a 30 as well. So we have 30 degrees and 30 degrees here. So we need to figure out, sorry, this is getting kind of messy, isn't it? 
we need to figure out what this angle is all the way to the terminal side, which is the hypotenuse. If this little piece is 30, but all the way to the axes is 180, how many degrees are we really going? We're going 180 less 30 degrees, right? So one of our thetas is 150 degrees. Okay. Now we got to figure out what the other theta is. So the other theta, we're going to go to the terminal side, which is this guy right here. If we go here, we've got 180 degrees. We know that this is 30, so we need to go just 30 more degrees. So 180 plus 30 degrees, our other theta is going to be 210 degrees. And we stop because it says it has to be in between 0 and 360. Okay, So we're only going around one time. So the theta values that make this lovely function equal to 0 is 120 degrees. I'm sorry, 150 degrees and 210 degrees. All right, let's keep going. Okay, put something behind there so you don't have to look at that writing behind. Okay, so same type of a thing. Let's make it look like something we aren't so scared of. Looks like, kind of looks like um, root 3, we'll just call this our variable because that's what we're solving for, minus 1 equals 0. If we had something like that, what would we do? We would add 1, add 1, square root of 3x equals 1, root 3, x equals 1 root 3, 1 over root 3, okay? All right, so let's think about this. Well, it's not x, right? So we could we could take this right here and say, this is an x. It's cotan x. And just throw cotan in front of it, and you're done. Or you can write it with the whole cotan x in there and do all the steps, OK? For simplicity's purposes, we're not going to rewrite this. So we are opposite of tangent. Tangent is to a. Uh, so this one is a o. Oh. What reference triangle has a root 3 and a 1? It's very important. You guys got to know your reference triangles for this unit, OK? So which reference triangle has a root 3 and a 1? Let's throw this out here. We'll just say this guy is in quad 1, but we'll figure out what quadrant it is here in a minute. Um, a, this is our theta. This is A. Our O is root 3. Our hypotenuse is 2. Opposite of theta is root 3, which means that is a 60-degree triangle. All right, now let's figure out where this thing is. If we go back to our original, we're talking about cotan or tangent. And is this a positive ratio or a negative ratio? Well, it's a positive. So all students take calc. Where is tangent or cotangent? Positive. All of them are positive here, and all of them are positive here. So we're in quadrant 1 and 3. Quadrant 1, that's easy enough, right? 60 degrees. That's 60 degrees. Easy. Down here, we know that this guy is 60, and then we got to just measure to our terminating side. So starting at 0, we get 180, and another 60 degrees. 180 plus another 60 degrees is... 240 degrees. So the theta that satisfies this equation is 60 and 240 degrees. Okay? All right, stick with me. I know this is going to be a long video, but it will help see a whole bunch of different types of these things, okay? We're going to go with the same restrictions between 0 and 360. They don't change, at least not in this course. All right, we want to solve for sine of theta that equals 1. Whenever they throw this 1 or a 0 to you, kind of think, don't think about triangles. Think about just your normal xy grid system, right? We remember sine is the same thing as y. Sine and y go together. So y is negative 1 down here because we're talking about the unit circle. Remember we talked about how this is really sine um, theta is y over the radius. The radius of a unit circle is 1. So this really is on the unit circle. What degree, this is 0, 0.0, negative 1. What degree is down here? If I were to go here all the way around, 
270 degrees. Is there anywhere else that sine, so y, would be negative 1? Nope. If it was talking about 0, then yes, it would be sine would be 0 on both of those guys. But for negative 1, there's only one value, so 270. It's not always two answers. It's not always one answer. Sometimes it's 4, sometimes it's 3, sometimes it's 1. All right, now look at this one. Okay, this one, if this one doesn't look scary and you don't think that you're going to be amazing when you figure this one out, man, you got to give yourself some credit. All right, we got a denominator. So let's get this thing to have a common denominator. I don't really care about this guy. This is my x, whatever. So if I wanted this thing to have a common denominator of 2, I'd multiply by 2 and 2. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 6 over 2, which is fine, plus cos theta equals negative 6 plus root 3 over 2. Okay, let's make this look like something special. Looks like, sorry, not something special, something easy. So let's just call it, I don't know, 6 plus x equals 6. Okay, easy, right? We can just subtract that, Oop, subtract that 6, subtract that 6, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing here. It's a negative 6 over 2, so what are we going to do? What's the opposite of negative? We're going to add 6 halves. Add 6 halves, which you're saying, well, yeah, 6 halves is 3, but we don't want to do that because we're adding fractions. We need a common denominator. So we could add 3 for sure, but we have to get the common denominator, so I just got it in the first step. So really, let's write down what we have. We have cos theta equals negative 6 plus root 3 over 2 plus 6 over 2. When we have a common denominator like that, we can rewrite it as one fraction. Then we can look at this and simplify the numerator. Negative 6 plus a positive 6 goes away. So we really get cosine theta is a positive root 3 over 2. All right, well, we can do that. That's another one of our reference triangles, right? So let's figure out what quadrant we're in. It's a cosine. It's a positive. All students take calc. So we're positive in 1, and we're positive in quadrant 4. Okay. What reference triangle am I talking about? Let's go back to good old basics, AH. Let's go ahead and draw just a regular old triangle, theta. A is root 3, H is 2, so that would mean this side is 1, opposite of 1, smallest side, smallest angle. What kind of triangle is this? 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90? This is 30, 60. So theta is equal to 30. So we know that this guy is 30, and this guy is 30. So we want to measure to the terminating sides. First one's easy peasy. Second one, we got to go all the way around. Okay, last one. I hope you guys are pausing this and really thinking about this as you're going through because I'm speeding through these. I do not expect you guys to watch this without pausing and understand this. So please take some time and pause it, figure out what's going on. All right, let's cover up this stuff up here. Okay, last one for this video. So we want to get the cosine or the x variable by itself. So if this was just 8x, what would we do? If it was 8x equals something. Oh, well, we divide by 8. Guess what? Same thing. We divide by 8. So we get cos theta equals negative 4 root 3 over 8. There's no plus or minus in between these two things, so we can cancel this guy out. So if you're looking at the, co uh, the whole numbers there, or the integers, I should say, they cancel out. So negative 4 and 8, that would be negative 1 and 2. So we want to figure out cosine theta. Where does it equal negative 1 root 3 and 2? We could just say negative root 3 and 2, right? Negative root 3 and 2, you should be thinking 30, 60, 90. Are you thinking that? Because you should be. 
Okay, so let's figure out what quadrant we are in. A, all, students, take, calc. Oops, calc. This is a negative, so the cosine is positive in one and four, so we're not gonna be there because it's not positive, it's negative. So we're in quadrant two and quadrant three. Okay, let's figure out what triangle we're talking about here. A, H, so our adjacent is root three, our hypotenuse is two, which means our opposite is one. What angle is that? That's a 30. So this is 30, this is 30. All right, so we're gonna measure from zero to our terminal side. So it's like we go almost to 180, but no, we're gonna go back up 30 degrees. So we're at 150 degrees. Okay, let's do the next guy. We're gonna go 180 plus 30 more degrees. 180 plus 30 is 210. So our theta, thetas is 150 and 210. All right, those are the basic trig equations we're gonna solve. It's gonna get a little bit more scary looking, but not complicated. I'll show you.